So Philip is another one of these that was chosen by the twelve to be a, uh, a leader or a, a minister of the daily ministry of the church, taking care of the widows and making sure people were fed and that sort of thing. And and he was he again was somebody of good character. The Acts six three we read it before. Therefore select from among yourselves seven people of good standing, full of the spirit and wisdom. And certainly we learned that's what Stephen was. As Stephen, we learned last week, set that foundation and his life was certainly a witness. In fact, it's a very short story because because he spoke up in the name of Jesus Christ, he was killed. He was a martyr. He was our first martyr in faith. Now the second is Philip. So we're going to learn a little bit about him. Now last week where we left off, Stephen has been stoned and the church is in absolute turmoil. He's just been killed by the Sanhedrin who've been urged on by Saul. And, and we hear that, that confirmed in the first verse of this, chap, this week's chapter, chapter 8, with these ominous words. And Saul approved of their killing him. That's, that started the crisis. That day, it goes on to say, severe persecution began against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout the countryside of Judea and Samaria. So people were taken off, man. They're killing, they're killing Christians, and people are taking off. And Philip is one of those that is, has been chased out of Jerusalem. And he's, so he, like Stephen, was doing more than waiting on tables. When he got chased out, he was proclaiming the good news wherever he went. And the scripture tells us he was chased out of Jerusalem and ended up in Samaria. So what did he do in Samaria? What does a Christian do? He shared the word of God. He shared the good news in Samaria. He started preaching there. Followers of Christ are witnesses regardless of circumstance. And that's exactly what Philip did. Followers of Christ, no matter what befalls them, still carry with them that moniker of Christian and, and that Holy Spirit inside that calls us to be witnesses of the good news. And, and that's exactly what Philip did that day. And Philip was kicking it, man. In Samaria, you know, and Samaria is not like the favorite town in the Bible. You'll hear that they always talk about Samaritans as being a bad place and all this. But he's in Samaria and he's preaching the good news of Jesus Christ, that Christ is risen from the dead for each of them, for all of us. And things are happening, man. It's they're, they're, Things are working and, and Philip's kicking it and he's preaching and he says and the scripture says he did signs and wonders just like Stephen did and the people were believing. Verse 12 says, but when they believed Philip but when they believed Philip who was proclaiming the good news about the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus they were baptized, both men and women. So here he is in Samaria baptizing new Christians. He got chased out but he kept on proclaiming the word and he's got things rolling. So, so this church in Samaria is growing so so much so that you know, the scripture goes on to say that, that Peter uh, was dispatched out, uh, out to Samaria because of the good things that Philip was doing out there. That, that both uh, Peter and John, those great disciples, you know, it's kind of like sending the bishops coming to see us. It's like if we were doing something great here and the bishops showed up, it was like that big of a deal. So really things were kicking, right? And, and that's where we pick up the passage today. And, and so everything's going great and all of a sudden we hear verse 26 then an angel of the Lord said to Philip get up and go towards the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza and then it says in parentheses this is a wilderness road maybe I heard that wrong you want me to leave this place where it's kicking and go out onto some deserted road and when he got there he must have thought what am I doing here? Right? Thank you. Thank you, Richard. One. All right. Uh, so, so he's sitting out there thinking, I, you know, we had great things going on. You brought me out there. It sounds amazingly like the appointment process in the United Methodist Church. I have to admit that all of a sudden, sometimes you end up somewhere completely different. But, but he must have been thinking, what am I doing there? And on this deserted road after this big run and things will work. But, but the truth of the matter is, our plans are rarely God's plans, right? 
Our plans are rarely God's plans. God's got a way of doing things that we think we got it all figured out, and that's not the way it goes. And that's certainly what was going on with Philip. He's, he's standing along this road, and, and he, must, he had to have heard the words from Isaiah to confirm that. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. I'm doing something a little different here, Philip. And how many of us feel that when we're all of a sudden picked up and sent somewhere completely different in ministry and it's like starting over in some ways and it's a fearful and lonely place. Have you ever been there? Yes. Yeah. So that's, that's where we find Philip. And then this eunuch comes along. Now, uh, the least likely person in the Old Testament to be received into God's grace according to the Old Testament law was a eunuch. And uh, uh, eunuchs are out. De Deuteronomy 23.1 says, and I'm going to quote it from the message because they do a nice job of not telling us what a eunuch is. No eunuch is to enter the congregation of God. This is exactly what it says in, in Deuteronomy. And, and so uh, Philip must have been thinking, what's he doing here? You know, okay, God's called him out into this wilderness road, and then all of a sudden the least likely person to be brought into the faith according to the law is, is, is showing up in a chariot. What is he doing here? And so Philip's got to be sitting there going, this, is this what you want, Lord? Is this what's going on? And, and that, the last person that comes in, 1 Corinthians 1, 27, 28 said, Isn't it obvious that God deliberately chose men and women that culture overlooks and exploits and abuses? Chose the, these nobodies to expose the holly, hollow pretensions of the somebodies. Ouch. Man. Is that not true in our own lives? Do we not kind of prejudge who's going to hear the word? So we pick, you know, if somebody's carrying a Bible, we'll talk to them about Jesus. But, you know, somebody comes up with, uh, Richard, their leathers on and, you know, their colors. Or, or maybe if, uh, they're behind you with flashing red and blue lights like I've seen many times along the highway. And God prompts you to speak to them. How many of you think... What are they doing here? But that's where God sent Philip. And then, just to top it off, this eunuch is reading scripture from the Bible. And so you'd think it would be, you know, like a real good, encouraging scripture. But if you listen to the scripture he was reading, it's Isaiah 53, 7 and 8. And it says this, like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. And like a lamb, silent before his shear, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe this generation? It goes on to say, for his life is taken away from the earth. Now, doesn't that sound like, hey, let's come to church kind of scripture? Okay, come on, we're having a slaughtering today, and you may get to be a part of that. Super. So, here's Philip out on the road, left mega church in Samaria where things were hopping, ends up on a dusty, deserted road with a guy who uh, is not supposed to come into the kingdom according to the Old Testament, reading from the Old Testament some of the worst language. My ways, God says, are not your ways. And Philip had a choice at that point. The bottom line is that God does make a way. And Philip, because he responded to the prompting of the Spirit, God moved in a magnificent way. And I think when we look at this scripture, that God is doing more than we realize. It's not just this individual. Remember, when we are prompted by God, our response makes a kingdom difference. It's more than meets the eye in the saving of this eunuch that day. This is, this is a statement. This is a statement of God's saving grace that actually spans the scripture. And if you look at verse 26, it says, An angel of the Lord spoke to Philip. Well, that's a term that is predominantly used in the Old Testament. And it's as if it has been written to say that the Old Testament, the angels of the Old Testament are saying, go speak to this guy. 
Even though the scripture may say differently, God has made a way. And then three verses later, it says the Holy Spirit spoke. And we know from this journey in Acts that the Holy Spirit is the one who is speaking. So both the Old Testament and New Testament are brought together in this conversation with this eunuch, sharing the Word of God. This is all of the Word of God coming forward and making a difference, a magnificent difference, because he responded to the prompting of God. And so that's where we're at. Even though the law says the eunuchs are out, God makes a way. Even though they're out on a dusty road, God sends Philip to be there. It was the Spirit that told him to approach. And the message is clear. It is a statement of inclusivity. If you look closely, you see that, he's, that the eunuch has just come from Jerusalem. Where was the big church at? Anybody remember? Where, did, where was the, the church growing at? Jerusalem! So this eunuch had been in Jerusalem. And he obviously did not get cared for in the big church. But on the road, out in the wilderness, when he's mulling over the words, God made a way.